The Labour leader, in his first keynote speech of the general election campaign, mocked the national service scheme by branding it a teenage circ. Ear Starmer has dodged questions over whether he supports the principle of national service for youngsters. The Labour leader, in his first keynote speech of the general election campaign, mocked the policy by branding it a teenage dad's army. But circ. Ear failed to answer a question on whether there was enthusiasm among young people, including his teenage son and his friends, about signing up for the armed forces. And he sidestepped whether or not he supported the principle of national service, something the government believes will help teens out of. He told reporters, I do accept the proposition that we need strong defenses, and that has to be the first duty of any government, but I think this plan is, I don't think it'll work. You've seen what military experts have said about. You've seen what the government said about it just a few days ago when they were asked that it would take away from the resources of the military rather than help. The Prime Minister's modern-day version of national service would involve school leavers either enrolling on a 12-month military placement or spending one weekend each month volunteering in their community. But Tory MPs seized on the teenage dad's army comments to highlight how Sir Ear has never taken defence seriously. Veterans Minister Johnny Mercer told the Daily Express, a leopard can't change its spots, he supported Jeremy Corbyn. He's always sneered at my type. Rishi Sunak's national service scheme would include very limited exemptions from participation, and young royals would be expected to take. Ministers would also consider the creation of fast track routes for graduate schemes and the civil service for those who complete the year of national service with the military. The £2.5 billion policy is not expected to be fully implemented until 2028 29 if the Tories win the election. year, speaking in Lansing, West Sussex, made his pitch to the nation that he could be trusted with the nation's finances, borders and sick. He told activists, the very foundation of any good government is economic security, border security, national security. Make no mistake, if the British people give us the opportunity to serve, then this is their core test. It is always their core test. The definition of service. Can you protect this country? I haven't worked for four years on this. Just to s during the highly personal speech, where the Labour leader spoke about his own upbringing, Sir Ear said economic stability is the bedrock of it. He said, it wasn't easy for us. My dad was a tool maker. He worked in a factory, my mum was a- but for most of her life she had a debilitating illness, Stills disease. To be honest, she would hate that word, debilitating, because mum never gave up, she never complained. But her illness did shape our This was the 1970s of course, so there were hard times. I know what out of control inflation feels like, how the rising cost of living can make you scared of the postman coming down the path, will he bring another bill we can't have. We used to choose the phone bill because when it got cut off, it was always the easiest to do without. We didn't have mobiles back then but you could still just about now, all this has stayed with the Labour leader also laughed off suggestion he is too weary or lacks the stamina for a general election camp. The Conservatives on Sunday said Sir Ear had been resting at home on Sunday, although pictures later emerged of the opposition leader meeting voters in Brighton. He said, I've had a smile on my face since January 1, 2024 because I knew this was going to be an election year. I've wasted nine years of my life in opposition. I've worked four and a half years to change this Labour Party, and now I've got the chance to take that to the country. So we're doing that not only with energy, but with a smile, with positivity across all of our candidates as we go into.